Today's video is going to be a little different, and I hope it's the start of something good. Many of you have asked me to cover the skills I learned in Dialectical Behavior Therapy, or DBT. And I want to talk about it, but I don't want to just tell you a skill. I kind of want to go a little bit deeper than that. So consider this video the start of an intermittent series where I take one DBT skill and do a deep dive on it, talking about what it is and why it works. Because a lot of us have been taught these techniques and use them regularly, but we might not know why they're so effective. From a psychological standpoint, but also sometimes a biological one. I think this is going to be so fun. So if that sounds good to you, then sit back, grab a beverage, and let's get into it. The skill I'm going to talk about today is one of several distress tolerance skills. Skills that are under an umbrella that in the DBT world we call TIP. That's T. I P. TIP is a strictly biology-based skill set that I'm really excited to talk about. For today's video, I'm only going to be covering the T in TIP, which stands for temperature. And this skill is meant to make you chill out a bit when emotions are really, really high. And if someone feels really unstable. The idea is, and I quote, tip the temperature of your face with cold water in order to calm down fast. In short, you use cold water on your face and it alleviates intense emotions like anxiety. And somehow you magically calm down in seconds when you do this skill. Which sounds crazy, how could something as simple as cold water on the face chill you out? Well, it works, and it's not magic, it's science. The idea behind this skill is hacking biology by making your brain think you're underwater, which has the effect of calming you down by using physiological mechanisms that are naturally built into everybody's bodies. Humans are mammals, and all mammals have the ability to do this thing called the mammalian dive reflex. It's also called diving bradycardia or the diving response. But whatever you want to call it, it's a biological response to diving underwater. And when mammals do this, three distinct things happen. The first is that bradycardia occurs, which means the heart rate dramatically slows. This helps reduce the work of the heart and limits unnecessary oxygen consumption. And lowering oxygen consumption is one of the big ideas of the diving reflex. Because, you know, since you're underwater, you can't get more oxygen, so you're stuck with what you have. The second is apnea, which is a fancy word that means no breathing, which, duh, but it's still a part of the reflex. I'll get into why this is important in a few minutes, because there is an underlying mechanism to this that is actually quite astonishing. The final thing that happens is something called peripheral vascular resistance, which is a little more complicated than bradycardia and apnea. The big idea here is that the body redistributes blood to the vital organs, aka basically the brain and the heart, which happens when the peripheral vascular system constricts upon submersion. And in doing this, it pulls blood away from non-essential muscle groups to limit oxygen consumption. And that's the short version. The reflex was first mentioned in 1786, but it would take all the way until 1870 to have the physiological adaptations recognized. And it was only in the 1930s that it was formally studied. But we've still known about it for quite some time. And it's been happening for basically forever. And this can be activated by dunking your face in cold water. The whole reflex that we all have can be switched on at will, and very easily at that. Unfortunately, research is limited because of logistics. You can probably see why experiments would be difficult to do even on a small scale. There have been plenty with animals, but lordy lordy humans are way more complicated. But what's really cool though is that the mechanisms by which all of these aspects of this reflex are maintained is a totally different set of mechanisms than what we have normally. In day-to-day -day life, the nervous system deals with the homeostasis that we all know and love. But when someone goes underwater, peripheral receptors are triggered, and they take over to reduce oxygen consumption to maintain safe levels as long as possible. This is complicated to explain. So just know that somehow, when someone goes underwater, the body temporarily runs on a different set of rules that seamlessly switch over upon submersion and then return to normal once out of the water. It's literally a biological switch that helps with survival. How cool is that? But on the topic of the apnea aspect that I said I'd come back to, we have something interesting that occurs with the reflex when it's seen in animals. When submerged, oxygen levels in the blood drop drastically, from 95 to 20% according to one paper I found. This normally would be a sign for the animal to breathe if they were on land. And I mean really breathe. But when they're underwater, 
that won't happen. So it's wild to me that even when blood chemistry changes so drastically, breathing still will not happen underwater in those animals as a result of that, even though CO2 builds up as well. Like the tolerance for hypoxia is so high in some animals. Diving aquatic mammals are something else, I tell you what. And I do need to say that in humans, the apnea aspect is still part of the reflex that we all experience. I do want to make that clear if it wasn't already obvious. And honestly, I thought that when I did research with this topic, what I'd find were just mere autonomic adjustments, which did happen. But the fact that there was more to it than that was actually pretty cool for me as a researcher. Like having not breathing be a inherent part of the diving reflex was actually a pretty cool fact to learn. And it does make sense when you think about it. So now we've talked about the science of the reflex and why it does what it does. But why would activating it calm you down if you're in a heightened emotional state? It mainly has to do with the bradycardia aspect. The slowed heart rate we see with the dive reflex happens via the parasympathetic vagus nerve. And you will hear me talk about the vagus nerve in other videos because it's super important and super awesome. But by activating the vagus nerve, you're calming your body and calming its responses, thus calming the physical effects of being in distress or emotional dysregulation and promoting relaxation as a result. I mean, think about it. If you suddenly don't have a faster heart rate, as oftentimes it is elevated in times of distress, you're going to calm down a bit by default and calmed down fast. That's what this does, and that's why we think it works. So now I wanna take a moment and talk about how you actually do this skill, because not all of us have immediate access to a pool. Plus putting on a swimsuit in the middle of an anxiety attack and then running to the nearest pool just isn't really a feasible option for most people. Like that would never work in the moment, let's be real here. So there are a few ways that DBT teaches this skill, and they can help you get all the benefits of the reflex without going literally all in. While all the research I just mentioned talked about water, you can kind of cheat with it a bit. But regardless of the method, a big thing with the reflex is that the nose has to be affected by the water. A source I found mentioned, and I quote, the autonomic reflexes of the mammalian diving response can be induced with only snout immersion. Snout. Love that. This has to do with the nerves found in the nose. Meaning apparently you can just dunk your nose into water and still get all the effects of the diving reflex. That is if we are to translate the research that's been done in animals to humans, which isn't always a good thing to do, but it's an interesting thing to think about. It's a fun, but most likely useless fact that you now know. You're welcome. But I guess the usefulness of it is to know that Maybe, just maybe, the nose is the most important aspect of this whole thing. So, the easiest way, arguably the most natural, and the one I've already mentioned a few times in this video, is to get a bucket, fill it with cold water that is above 50 degrees, and then hold your breath and dunk your entire face in the water. I just put my hair up and get right up in it. You do have to wait 15 to 30 seconds though for the diving reflex to kick in because that's how long it takes in most people. But after that, you can either stay under until you can't anymore or just end it. You'll get the benefits either way. I usually stay under as long as possible because for me, time almost stops when I'm on a breath hold and I just love the freedom I feel with it. And this version is what I did when I was using this skill every day, multiple times a day in my early recovery. You'll notice that you're calmer and you feel better, even if you don't go into this skill with emotional distress. It's super cool. The other way you can do this is by filling a Ziploc bag with once again, cold water that's above 50 degrees. Then you lean back in a chair or on a bed or on a couch, and then you put it over your eyes and your nose. The DBT skills workbook says upper cheeks and eyes, but science says to include the nose. So I do that when I do this version of the skill. Still hold your breath and wait 15 to 30 seconds. It will work in a pinch if you can't do the bucket method. This one is more travel friendly and there's something to be said for that. I've also had luck splashing cold water on my face while holding my breath for 15 to 30 seconds and that works in a pinch as well. And once again, you include the nose, obviously. And while 15 to 30 seconds is what they recommend in DBT, I found that 30 to 45 seconds worked really well for me. Editor Kit here. While the DBT handbook says the dive reflex takes 15 to 30 seconds to kick in, 30 seconds is what's recommended on another page. Yay, consistency. So it's up to you what you try. 
Personally, I was taught 15 to 30 seconds minimum for this skill, so that's the main reason I've said 15 to 30 seconds throughout this video. In addition, cold packs on the face also work to trigger the reflex like the bucket method and the bag of cold water concept. Cold packs never work for me because they hurt after a short while, but they are effective for some and sometimes easier to do than the other methods. That's all, happy tipping. And if it wasn't clear already, this skill is for high emotion situations where you feel out of control and need to calm down as fast as possible. And hopefully you see why this skill is DBT's most powerful anxiety hack. However, I need to mention an important side note here. If someone has heart problems, meaning they have a pacemaker or they are on beta blockers for some reason, or just any other heart stuff that's out of the ordinary, those people need to talk to their doctor before attempting this skill. Because as you now know, that bradycardia is extremely powerful. And as a result, this can cause problems in some people. So please, be careful with this one. To wrap up this video, this whole thing, the mammalian dive reflex is the most powerful known autonomic reflex, which is wild. It's found in every mammal, including humans. And when activated, it is a powerful tool to fight anxiety, distress, and even crisis situations. So next time you're feeling a little out of control, dunk your face in a bucket of cold water and see what happens. This was a new style of video for me, and I'd love to do deep dives on the skills that you guys want to hear about. So drop any suggestions in the comments. As always with videos like this, my sources are linked in the description box down below if you want to fact check me or do your own research. Two of the papers I listed in the description talk about the neural networks and the nerve systems that are involved in the diving reflex. It was a little too complicated for me to go over in this video, but it's a really cool read if you're into that kind of thing, because they do a deeper biological dive than what I did here. Other than that, YouTube really seems to think that you'd like this video, so go check that out if you want more content from me. And as always, thank you for joining me in making the uncomfortable comfortable. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.